Burkhard posted an interesting circuit on his website uh, yesterday. It's uh, by this chap here, Norbert Renz. It's an alpha radiation detector that's essentially an AC ion chamber. I've um, been playing with it today. The, I made some changes to the circuit, but I think the, the basic concept is actually uh, quite interesting now. Over here, on the bench, so you can see we have the circuit lashed up on a circuit board, a um, sort of circuit board, and it's detecting alpha particles from my little chunk of thorium here, little thoria rock. Got a Barocca can that I've uh, cut off with a pipe cutter, and inside here we have a FET, um, just buffering the basically the current from the chamber, and an LM358, some resistors, capacitors, etc., as a low pass filter. And how it really works, we can see up here on the oscilloscope. The top trace, the uh, yellow trace, is the raw signal out of the um, ion chamber. You can see it's, it's pretty noisy. The bottom blue trace is low pass filtered and then amplified quite significantly, only at the low frequencies. The individual uh, peaks you see are the jitters caused by individual ion trails in the um, ion chamber as an alpha particle interacts with the gas in the chamber. So, by running that the two signals through a comparator, anything that uh, any of the jitters basically causes a transition in the output of the, uh, the comparator, and we drive a lead and as you can see here, just flick a needle on a uh, VU meter, which is rather useless, but the, uh, the individual pulses can be counted perhaps with a mechanical counter. I've got a variety of these cheap counter kind of modules that could be used for that. But, yeah, it's quite an interesting little circuit. What I think I'll do is I'll... Um, I've added a couple of adjustments myself. I added some hysteresis to the comparator to make it uh, a little bit more reliable, because the signal's a little bit noisy, and as it uh, passes through the transition region of the comparator, it can uh, can cause false triggering and uh, multiple you know triggers if you're going to count it digitally. But I think what I'll do is I'll I'll add two low pass filters, one with a very long time constant to remove the DC, um, and I to do extract the DC f basically for temperature compensation from the FET in here. The FET um, voltage, sound, you know, quiescent current will drift around. And then a, a one with a, a much uh, shorter time constant that will pick up the individual jitters from the ion trails, and then I'll run them into a comparator with some variable hysteresis. And uh, then a monostable to produce a click and a flash of light, etc., and then integrate it into a meter. But yeah, it's quite a, quite a cool little device. Um, surprising how well it works. This Thoria rock is not particularly hot. I mean, it, it puts out a lot of alpha radiation but my americium source is way way too hot it uh, it pegs the the needle on this thing but you can still see individual trails as you move the source away to the point where there's only a few alpha particles actually making it into the chamber before they are uh, completely stopped by the air anyway cool little project I'll uh, post some more on it the uh, gamma detection side of things has also been underway Lots of problems with light leaks and uh, trying to get the circuit to consume as little power as possible so I can run it off uh, small batteries like these um, 12 volt cigarette lighter batteries. But it only pulls a milliamp or two as is, but it would be nice to get it down to a couple of hundred microamps so that you could have a reasonable life with those small batteries. Anyway, work continues. Uh, I've also been going and looking for every kind of chamber, you know, metallic shield box you can find. This is uh, one of those air freshener tubes that I cut the top off with a, a pipe cutter. Unfortunately the inside is coated with some kind of plastic coating. So is the Barocca tube, but I, uh, it's easy to sand the inside of the Barocca tube and turn it into a reasonable ion chamber, whereas the these ones, uh, oh you could do it, but uh, not so much. And also they're quite thin walled. They've uh, really been process engineered to the point where the aluminium is just thick enough to be, uh, to be what you need. Also being aluminium, it's a pain in the butt to solder to, but that's uh, it's a fairly minor consideration. You can tin them with a bit of zinc if you're careful, or tin them under oil. Or you could just put a, a screw through the thing and uh, contact it with a, you know, some star washers, etc., to make good contact with it. Alrighty. Um, we'll post another video later when we get something closer to a finished product.